Oxford, England is world famous for its prestigious University of Oxford, and it holds a special place in my heart because it's where my dad grew up, and I've always dreamed of going there just to, you know, see where he grew up and just admire the beauty of this charming city. So I finally was able to go a few weeks ago, and I'm so excited to share some of the top things to do with you. Before we dive in, let's talk about how to get there from London since that's most likely where you're going to be coming from. You have two main choices unless you rent a car bus or train. The train runs about every 10 minutes either from Paddington Station or Marlburn Station. Marlburn Station? It takes about an hour and is about 10 to 15 pounds each way for a weekend journey. The weekday journeys just absolutely skyrocket for the commuters. Or you can take something called the Oxford Tube, which is confusing because it's not the tube, it's a bus, but it does connect London and Oxford for 10 pounds each way and runs about every 10 to 15 minutes. It starts at London Victoria Station and has a few stops within London, like Notting Hill and Shepherd's Bush, before hopping on the highway to head up to Oxford. This is personally the option that I chose just because I was able to walk to one of the bus stops, which is a few minutes from my house. You can download the Oxford Tube app on your phone and purchase the round trip ticket, which will be a QR code in the app. This next part is very, very important. Do not activate your ticket until you are literally boarding the bus, like stepping onto the bus, because from the moment you activate your ticket, you only have 15 minutes to use the ticket and then it expires. So I literally waited until right before I needed to scan it on board and then I did it. Because as soon as you click activate, a timer just starts counting down for 15 minutes. It's like really intimidating so make sure that you know the bus is there not just you think the bus is going to come at a certain time the bus is there you are going on the bus and then you click activate the bus is super nice it has leather seats charging stations wi-fi a little tray table so it's a very easy and comfortable ride so i feel like since each transportation choice is pretty much the same time and price just go with whatever is closest to your hotel or your house. Now let's dive into the top things to do in Oxford, England. First up is Christchurch, which is a constituent college of the University of Oxford in England, founded in 1546 by King Henry VIII. It is absolutely stunning. Like, get used to that. Everything in Oxford is stunning. It's great to snap some photos from the outside, but unfortunately, if you want to go in or even if you want to go to the courtyard area, you do have to pay or be a part of a tour, which is a very common theme in Oxford. You know, I understand because a lot of these buildings are being used by university students and staff, but it's a bummer because the insides and the courtyards would be amazing to see. Like here at the Christchurch is one of the many Harry Potter filming locations in Oxford that would be lovely to see for us Harry Potter fans. Next, you can go around back to go to the Christchurch Meadow, which is free to enter, thank God. <laughs> it's a lovely little green space where you can get a nice view to see how vast Christchurch actually is, which you can't really tell how big it is just by looking at the front. So take a walk through the park. There are even some cows there if you just want to relax and soak in all the views. Next, you can walk up the road to the Oxford Castle and Prison, which honestly is one of the more underwhelming buildings in Oxford, in my opinion. Maybe the only underwhelming building in Oxford but it's definitely worth seeing you can walk around the castle area free of charge but you can't see the inside or even go up to the castle mound which is supposed to have good views without paying the admission fees so tours run about every 20 minutes from 10 a.m. to 4 20 p.m. every day and the guided tour lasts about an hour the castle was built in 1073 and was switched to a prison in 1216 and then stopped being an operational prison in 1996 so pretty recently. Now we have arguably the most famous landmark in Oxford, the Radcliffe camera. It is absolutely stunning and probably the image you think of when you think of Oxford. It's a building of the University of Oxford designed by James Gibbs in a Baroque style and built from 1737 to 1749 to house the Radcliffe Science Library. The camera was named for Dr. John Radcliffe who was the physician to the monarchs William III and Mary of England and left a trust to Oxford University when he died in 1714. Access to the Radcliffe camera is reserved for Oxford students and and people with a Bodleian Library's reader card, so most of us can only see it from the outside and snap some photos. Now, since I just mentioned it, we'll talk about the Bodleian Library, which is the main research library of the University of Oxford and is one of the oldest libraries in all of Europe. It derives its name from its founder, Sir Thomas Bodley, with over 13 million printed items. It is the second largest library in Britain after the British Library. The Divinity School inside was where Hogwarts Hospital Wing was filmed in the Harry Potter movies. Next up, we have the Sheldonian Theatre, which 
almost looks like a smaller version of the Radcliffe camera. It was built from 1664 to 1669 and is named after Gilbert Sheldon, a former chancellor of the University of Oxford. It is the principal assembly room for the university and the regular meeting place of the congregation, which is the body which controls the university's affairs. Right across the alleyway from the theater is the iconic Bridge of Sighs. It's Skyway joining two parts of Hertford College over New College Lane. And honestly, just a beautiful photo op. Oxford is full of them. Next, we have Magdalen College, which is a constituent college of the University of Oxford. It was founded in 1458 by Bishop of Winchester, William of Wainflet. Again, you can go inside or even in the courtyards without paying or joining a tour, but it is a beautiful building that is along the river, so it's definitely worth going, you know, walking by, snapping some photos up. We happen to be in Oxford during matriculation, which I had never heard of, but basically it's a ceremony to officially welcome students to the University of Oxford. So if I'm being completely honest, it was a horrible day to go. Absolutely horrible. Do not recommend. Thousands and thousands of students all wearing the exact same outfits flooded the streets. And there must be a tradition to come to the river in front of Magdalene College to go punting during or after matriculation because the line was insanely long to do this. So since I just mentioned it, I'll go into a little bit of detail about what punting is because it is a top activity to do in Oxford. It's basically these long narrow boats and someone stands on the end of the boat with a long pole. Instead of rowing like you normally would do a boat, you use the pole to push off the ground, you know, inside the shallow river and move along that way. So if you're there during a time where it's not crowded and it's not matriculation with Oxford students all doing this, I would highly, highly recommend doing this. It looks like a lovely way to spend an hour or two. Next up, we have the University Church of St. Mary. Its exterior is a beautiful Gothic stone like all of the colleges, but this is accentuated by the tallest feature in the sky, the tower. The church is free to enter, but the tower costs five pounds to go up. Now let's talk about Merton Street, which doesn't have anything specific to see along it in all honesty but it is a nice back alleyway to stroll down with, with cobblestones and some beautiful buildings. Of course, Oxford is full of them. I keep repeating myself. It's all great photo opportunities, so I just recommend a nice walk down that street. Next up, it's time to grab a pint or some pub food at The Bear Inn, which is the oldest pub in Oxford, dating back to 1242. So if you want some traditional English food or just to sit down, drink a pint, and enjoy the atmosphere, this is definitely the place to do it. If you didn't grab a bite to eat at The Bear Inn, or even if you did, next up is the Oxford Covered Market. Honestly, the main thing to do here is eat or grab coffee. There's not a ton of actual shops for shopping and like buying items. So feel free to stroll through the little covered alleyways, explore the food options and everything else that it has to offer. If you're looking to do some shopping shopping, not necessarily souvenir shopping, but you know, just like general shopping, head to Westgate right at the end of High Street. It has all the shops you could want at any shopping center, TK Maxx, Primark, Urban Outfitters, H&M, you know, the list goes on and on. On, and they do have a street food court on the ground floor with a Mexican food option, Asian food, a burger place, a fried chicken shop. I tried the Mexican place because I've just been craving good Mexican food since leaving LA and unfortunately would not recommend trying it. It wasn't bad, but it tasted more like a Middle Eastern wrap than a Mexican burrito. I'm still searching for the best Mexican food in the UK and I'm determined to find it. So if you have any contenders, let me know in the comments. Next up, we have the Ashmolean Museum, which is Britain's first public museum displaying works of art from Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Picasso. And the best part is that it's absolutely free to enter. We love that. And last on the list is mainly a spot just for summertime, which is Port Meadow. It's a great spot for sunbathing and swimming in the river on a nice hot day. Oxford is one of those places where, yes, you know, it's nice to have a list of things you absolutely have to see. Some pins dropped on your map that you use when you're walking around. I know that's what I do. Anyone who watches my videos knows I'm a crazy Google map maker, but you know, the entire downtown of Oxford is truly one of the most gorgeous cities. Every building is absolutely stunning, even just random ones that have little to no significance they're just beautiful so you know use this as your guide to start off with but just know you can just wander the streets and you will find all the beautiful Oxford sites on your own it's a very doable day trip from London since it's only one hour away and although there's tons to see everything is within a 10 minute ish walk from each other so if you want to spend the night and turn it into a weekend trip 
by all means do, but just know it really is a very easy day trip and you can head back to London in that same day. London in itself has so much to do and see, so I know it's hard to narrow down what you should do if you have a short time to spend in London or in the UK in general. So take a look at this one day London itinerary to see all the main highlights in a short amount of time.